Russ has a lot of smart pointers to keep track of, and I am going to tier list all of the most well-known ones. The criteria? How often I personally find them useful in practice. Yes, this is completely arbitrary and very specific to the type of software that I build. If some of you went through the same exercise, your tier list would probably be an upside down version of mine. Folks, this is just for fun. There is no formal justification for any of it. All smart pointers are great in certain situations. Also, this is not a deep dive into smart pointers. It is a thousand foot bird's eye view, but maybe it'll show you which branch of the tree that you wanna go down next. Kicking things off. RC, it is a solid, solid, solid B tier. Yeah, B tier. RC is the reference counting pointer. RC is a little too easy to reach for in situations where you could have used a shared reference with a lifetime, but you just didn't want to deal with lifetimes. Don't act like you're above this. You know you've done it. But RC is great for situations where you need to store references to a piece of data throughout your program, and there's no way to know at compile time when that data should be deallocated. RC does not implement the sync trait, so it is not thread safe. And I find that these scenarios tend to arise more often in multi-threaded situations. For that, you need a different smart pointer that we'll get to in a little bit. Cell. Cell, it's, it's definitely not top tier. It's not, cell's gonna be C, all right? All smart pointers with cell in the name offer interior mutability. That means you can modify the value through shared references. That's best avoided if possible, but it's not always possible to avoid. Sometimes you have to. Cell in particular actually makes a copy of the contained value every time you call the get method. And that's really nice because it gives you that interior mutability, but there's nothing you can do that'll make your program panic. Unlike some of the smart pointers that we're going to talk about. Speaking of which, ref cell is one of the more dangerous smart pointers, and for that reason, it is going in the B tier. Slightly above cell, because it doesn't require that the contained data implement the copy trait, but it is dangerous. If you call its borrow mute method while there's already an existing mutable borrow, your program will panic. That's important to note. But sometimes you have shared references to a piece of data scattered throughout the program, and you need to be able to modify that data through any of those references. An easy example is when you have a graph or something equivalent to that, so you might not necessarily have ownership of the piece of data that needs to be modified. I don't personally find myself reaching for ref cell very often, but there are some very clear scenarios where it's the obvious and really the only choice. All right, moving on. Next up is lazy lock. Lazy lock is S tier. All right, this is my go-to in multi-threaded applications for singletons. Okay, here's the, here's the broader landscape. Lazy, what does that mean? Well, there are four smart pointers that are good for singletons. That's lazy lock, once lock, once cell, lazy cell. Lazy is great for when the singleton can be set up in a synchronous closure. In the new function, you just provide a closure that initializes the data and the closure gets run the first time the lazy lock is read. Lazy lock implements the sync trait, so it can also be used in statics, which makes it perfect for things like database connections, HTTP clients, and so on. Lazy cell is, oh man, this, this hurts to do. I gotta put an F tier. It basically has the same use case as lazy lock, but there's no locking and it doesn't implement the sync trait, so you can't use it in statics. It is good for single threaded scenarios. What I need is some kind of global state. It, it's almost always in a multi-threaded situation. I've, I've not used lazy cell. I'm sure it's useful in some situations, but I gotta put it in F tier. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll put it in C tier. I'm more likely to use it because it allows you to specify a single block of initialization logic in contrast to once cell, which I am going to put in F tier. I've, I've never used this. I can't think of many scenarios where I would use it. If you're using once cell, please tell me in the comments how you're using it. It's got the same problems I mentioned as lazy cell. It's not thread safe. And so it's only going to work in single threaded situations. You can't make static variables of type once cell unless you put it in a thread local macro. Quick overview of what once refers to more broadly. They're kind of like lazy in that they are intended for singletons, but the lazies make you define upfront how the data is going to be initialized if it is eventually needed. That means how the data is initialized has to be the same no matter where the initialization happens. Now, the once smart pointers allow you to have different initialization logic depending on the situation. The get or init method accepts a closure containing the initialization logic. That means you can have different initialization logic for each call to get or init. Of course, if the value was already initialized, the existing value is returned and the provided closure is never executed. There are some use cases for this. I just don't find myself running into them very often. So yeah, I, I gotta put one cell in F tier, unfortunately. Once lock is A tier. 
for reasons that are a little bit uh, a little bit backwards. One of my problems with lazy lock is that it requires your initialization logic to be synchronous. In a lot of cases, the initialization logic is not synchronous. It is async. So what I usually do in those situations is make a once lock as a static variable. And then I actually call once lock dot set probably at the top of my main function. And my main function is asynchronous, so I can do that. I can specify whatever asynchronous init logic I have and then await that pass the value to once lock dot set. I typically don't use the feature of once where you can have different initialization logic depending on where you're first using it. So the reason it's an A tier is kind of counterintuitive, but there it is. You know what? I think I'm gonna demote lazy lock because it requires your init logic to be synchronous. Sorry, lazy lock. Uh, yeah, gotta do it. Next up is cow and cow is a solid, solid B tier. What is cow? It is for scenarios where sometimes you can do with a shared reference to some existing data, but sometimes you need to create a new piece of data and maintain ownership of that data. It handles both of those scenarios interchangeably. That's really handy for scenarios where a function might return newly allocated memory or it might return one of its inputs unmodified. I don't reach for that one all the time, but I definitely feel like it's underrated and it is invaluable in certain situations where otherwise you'd be maybe cloning the data and just owning it everywhere. The next smart pointer is you should check out Let's Get Rusty if you wanna get better at Rust. <laughs> that might be the smartest pointer of all. This video is sponsored by Let's Get Rusty. It's what got me started four years ago because some parts of the language can be challenging and I credit Let's Get Rusty for helping me persevere through those challenges. A few years ago, Rust was an up and coming language. Now all the most important organizations are using it. It's even in the Linux kernel. Let's Get Rusty has helped me and thousands of other developers master the language. They're running a new cohort very soon and since spots are limited, now is a great time to check it out. Visit letsgetrusty.com slash start with CTTM or just click the link in the pinned comment below. Big thanks to Let's Get Rusty for supporting the channel. Ah, uh, Mutex, Mutex, where are we going? We're going, it's, it's not S tier for reasons I'll get to in a second. It's it's A or B. I'm I'm on the fence here. I could go either way. Eh. I'm gonna put it B tier I, because I rarely use Mutex. It's a good one when you need an exclusive lock on a piece of data whenever it's read or written to. The thing is, I rarely encounter the need for exclusive access to a piece of data. I find it almost always the case that enabling concurrent reads is valuable, which is why I usually use this next mark pointer and that is rw lock that is s tier get on up there you deserve it where do i start with rw lock <laughs> it gives you the ability to have thread safety mutable global state that can be shared across your application and it can be read from multiple places at the same time but if you request a read lock while there's an rw lock write guard in place that request for the read lock will block but that's the price you have to pay for data consistency i personally use rw lock all the time next up is arc the Atomic Reference Counting Smart Pointer. ARC is also, also a clear S tier. Like I said with RC, this is for scenarios where you have, have to have references to a piece of data throughout your application, and there's no way to know at compile time when that data will no longer be needed, so you need to maintain a reference count, and when that reference count goes to zero, that data is automatically deallocated. ARC implements the sync trait, which means you can use it in multi-threaded situations. You see this smart pointer all over the place in the Rust ecosystem. ARC is no question S tier smart pointer. All right, we got three left. Let's go with Box. And Box, maybe to your surprise, is a clear, clear S tier smart pointer. It's not flashy or anything, so it doesn't get a ton of love, but it is critical for a few patterns. If you have multiple implementations of a trait and you don't know at runtime which implementation you're going to be using, Box is what you're going to want to reach for. If you have a struct that contains a field of the same type, you're probably also reaching for box. At the end of the day, all it does is allocate your data on the heap instead of the stack, but sometimes that's what you need to do. All right, then we have pin. We're gonna put pin in the C tier. I rarely deal with pin directly, and a lot of you, even if you're doing asynchronous Rust, maybe you haven't dealt with pin directly. Pin ensures the memory location of the thing that you put inside it never changes. My experiences with pin have always been with futures, if you're just calling a wait on your futures, you won't deal with it directly, but if you're storing it to a variable and doing other things with it, there's a chance you might need to pin it. Not gonna go into too much detail there. There's a lot of usage that happens under the hood, but in terms of dealing with it directly, yeah, not very often for me. Then there's weak, and contrary to its name, 
No, I'm just kidding. That, that's F tier. I, I rarely use it. Like everything here, there is a use case for it. Weak is kind of like RC and ARC, but it doesn't contribute to the reference count for the underlying data. So the data can be deallocated even if there's a weak reference to it still. This is useful in situations where you want to read a piece of data that may or may not still be there. And you don't want that reference to cause the data to be maintained or the data to be around longer than it needs to be, right? There's also some situations with RC and ARC where you have two pieces of data pointing to each other where you could wind up with those pieces of data being orphaned and not deallocated when you want them to be because the reference counts don't go to zero. In those situations, weak comes into play. You'd want the pointers in one direction to be weak. so the data can be deallocated. Weak definitely has its place. I don't find myself reaching for it very often. All right, that is a completely arbitrary tier list of Rust smart pointers. Let me know what you would have ranked differently. I'm pretty interested to hear about use cases for these that I haven't thought of, especially, especially for the ones that I put in the lower tiers. If you like this video, definitely check out this other video about interior mutability. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.